but I'll look in. What's that like? Yeah. 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 So thank you for checking with me. Did you see the news? Johnny Depp won. Johnny Depp won? I'm sorry, Diane. I couldn't understand you. Okay. Diana, we're ready to begin the meeting. Here we go. Sorry. All right, so we'll call to order the June 1st, 2022 meeting of the Historic Preservation Board. Secretary, if you would call the roll, please. Tristan Finn. Here. Robert Ostinoff. Absent. Elise Lindstrom. Here. Rhonda Saxon? Here. Jim Chard? Here. Claudia Willis? Here. Benjamin Baffer? Here. Are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes. Okay. Are there any minutes to be approved? Uh, we don't have minutes for this meeting, but um, you will more than likely see a nice um, group of them uh, next month. Right, we will be looking forward to that. Yes. Can we get a motion for the agenda, please? I move to the agenda. Second. Who's the second? Rhonda. Kristen Finn? Yes. Robert Ostinoff? Absent. Elise Lindstrom? Yes. Rhonda Saxon? Yes. Jim Charlie? Yes. Claudia Willis? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? Yes. All right, swearing in of the public. Could you swear in anyone from the public who wishes to speak? If you plan on speaking tonight, if you could stand up and raise your right hand and she'll swear you in. Please raise your right hand by the authority vested in me of the notary of the state of Florida. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give mm -hmm. the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. we have any comments from the public not related to quasi-judicial items on the agenda? Seeing none, are there any presentations? Staff has no presentations this week. Okay, so moving right along to our quasi-judicial hearing items. Before we get started, has there been any ex parte communication? Sorry, actually, the item. Could, you, could you do the quasi-judicial rules first? Oh, got to read the rules. Okay. Quasi-judicial hearing rules. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with the City of Delray Beach quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be permitted to present their case. The public shall be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. City Commission, Board, members, staff, and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal views as to whether a project is a good project or not, nor may a decision be based on the numbers of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirements of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. Now, if staff wants to enter the file into the record, and then we can move to expert. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for the record, I'm Katharina Palavoda, um, Historic Preservation Planner. Um, I would like to enter um, agenda item A8. Um, it's COA 2022-142. Um, it's for 249 Royal Court, and it's a certificate of appropriateness. Have there been any ex parte communication, Mr. Chard? Uh, I drove by the property and down the parking lot to the north of it to look at the uh, fire damage. None for me? No. 
No. Okay. If, if the applicant wants to come forward to give the presentation. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Julian um, from Steve Silver Architecture. We are located at 466 North Federal Highway. Um, we are representing the owner, which is Andrew De Filippis, for this project. Um, if we can, I guess with this one, yeah. So as you can see on the existing pictures, um, this property suffered some damage um, through fire. Uh, in the, on the interior, it was perforated um, totally. It has about 50 or 60 percent of damage. Some elements of the property um, were really, really damaged, as like the doors, the windows, um, the roof. Uh, some of the shutters as well were damaged. And we are proposing to rebuild this roof, give a little bit of, um, to put it a little bit higher than it is right now with a proper uh, slope. On here, on the site plan, um, as you can see, uh, we are not proposing to change anything on the site plan. The setback, uh, all the building setbacks are exactly the same. Um, we are not adding nothing new, neither on the front, neither on the back of the property. Everything is going to be the same. Over here, we have the floor plan and we have the roof plan. For the floor plan, um, it's going to be exactly the same. Um, we are planning to do uh, to remodeling the, the interior, but that's going to be on a separate permit. On this permit, we're just going to uh, alter the roof and um, alter just the elevations that I'm going to show you later. Uh, on the roof plan, as you can see from the existing condition on the back, uh, the roof used to have used to follow the, um, the shape of the building, and we are proposing to, to just uh, run it straight to cover the complete building. I'm gonna show you on the renderings, you're gonna see what I'm talking about better. Here on the elevations, um, as you can see, the existing elevations, we have them um, below, and above we have the, the existing condition plus the new uh, work. Um, over here, we're having the, the existing height of the roof is at 8 feet 10 inches and we are proposing to elevate the roof at uh, 14 inches. That way we can have a proper slope for um, draining the, 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 the rain. That's the minimum uh, required. And also to have some space for running ducts uh, because the owner wants to have us um, ducting AC system, so that way we can have some more room to, to run them. Um, as you can see on the elevations, uh, all these elements like the, the shell shutters, they are going to be replaced for the same style, same color. The windows as well, they're going to have the same style, same color, and same materials. The, the color of the building is going to uh, remain. It's going to be the same color, the texture as well. Um, the other change that we're going to do here is that, as you can see below the roof, we're going to have a band that is going to wrap the building around. That's going to be the proportion that we are going to um, increase the building, the, the roof uh, higher. Um, Now, on this west elevation, on the existing, uh, you can see that we have the, um, you can see the back portion that I was talking about. Uh, the roof is following the shape of the building, and on the top, you can see that we are running totally straight. 
Um, that's the only change that we're doing to the, to the shape of the roof. Um, we don't believe that these changes are going to uh, alter the, um, in general, the, all the, the, um, like the streetscape. Uh, what else? Here as well, as you can see on the perspective D, that's the only where the only place where is gonna change the the roof, as I told you before. Um, what else? That's it. That's it. the only changes that we're gonna do. Thank you. Okay, um, for the record, I'm Michelle Hewitt. Um, again, this is agenda item 8A, 249 Royal Court, um, COA 2022-142. Um, so here is an aerial of the uh, property. It's directly adjacent to Royal Court um, to the south or southeast. Um, the structure is a duplex built in 1956 in the mid-century modern style. It contains a flat roof comprised of composition roll with wide eaves, a stucco exterior, and one over one single hung aluminum windows with clam shutter awnings. Earlier this year in 2022, there was a fire, as previously mentioned, that damaged the duplex, prompting this COA application. So here is the survey with the property outlined or dashed in red um, and the structure highlighted in blue. Here is the site plan um, with no proposed footprint changes. Um, this is the floor and roof plan. Uh, the proposal includes the replacement of an existing damage roof system with a new flat roof system to prevent pooling, uh, raising the roof line, and the replacement of the windows and doors with impact glass with no new openings proposed. Um, okay, so this is the side elevation from the east or northeast. The existing roof line is outlined in blue, and the proposed elevation roof line is outlined in red, um, where windows and doors will be replaced um, with like for like. And here's the existing side or west elevation. Again, the existing roof line are highlighted in blue at the top, and the proposed in red. And one more time here, the existing in the rear uh, or north elevation with the blue highlighted there. And you can start to see a little bit of the slight uh, slope here. And then from the front, um, again, the slight slope here with the raised roof line. So this is the an image of the front of the structure. Um, where you can see the roof line highlighted in blue. This is the side or east elevation. Um, again, you can see the roof line there where it currently exists and some of the windows and doors. Um, roof line there again from the rear and then from the side, the other side or the west side, um, again, highlighted in blue. So these are um, snippets from the Secretary of the Interior Standards and Guidelines, which discusses the recommended practice of replacing damaged roofs slash features with appropriate roofing material. And uh, here are the building materials in sample form with all the proposed materials set to match the existing structure. And then here are the findings for the board to use to determine their, if the request is appropriate. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Are there any public comments? Ooh, no public comments. Is there any rebuttal or cross-examination from staff or from the applicant? None from staff. If you could just come up to the microphone just to let us know if you have any rebuttal or cross-examination.
Thank you. And rebuttal. Okay. All right. Um, board discussion. I'll start off by saying I would commend the applicant for uh, rebuilding and repairing the building uh, after a fire. So often people like to say that it's damage beyond repair, and um, and the applicant has has made the the choice to, to repair their building, which which I think is great, and I, I think it's great that they're putting it back together just pretty much the way it the way it was, with the exception of elevating the roof. That I mean, make makes sense and doesn't really, in my opinion, doesn't change the opinion, but it, or doesn't change the appearance. Um, but it, it makes for for a better better roof and gives them the opportunity to run the air conditioning. So I just think it's a, a smart, um, you know, smart solution. I would just like to thank the client and the architect because I think they brought in a very sensitive design and thank you very much. We don't always get that. Uh, Just, just one quick question on the windows. I assume that's clear glass on the hurricane proof windows? Oh, yes. Yep, clear glass. I like the project. I agree with everything Ben said. You ready for a motion? I was just going to ask you. <laughs> what you fire away. <laughs> Uh, all right, I would like to move to approve the Certificate of Appropriateness 2022-142 for the property located at 249 Royal Court, Del Ida Park Historic District by finding that the request and the approval thereof is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth with the land development regulations. Second that motion. Kristen Finn. Yes. Robert Ostinoff? Absent. Elise Lindstrom? Yes. Rhonda Saxon? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Claudia Willis? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? Yes. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not sure if that's appropriate. Thank you. <laughs> Read this into the record. <laughs> Do I have to read this into the record here? The file number and all of that? Uh, yeah, you can okay. go ahead and introduce oh, okay. it into okay. the record. Um, um, what do I say? <laughs> um, I'd like to read into the record uh, agenda item 8B for 235 North Swinton Avenue, um, item number, or COA number 2022-164. There been any ex parte communication? Uh, I just drove by and parked in the parking lot in front. None. No. None. No. Drove by. Okay. Um, the owner is here to present. <coughs> So you were the guy that parked in my parking lot, huh? Oh, I didn't do anything. Sorry. Oh, wait. Right by all the golf carts. <laughs> I got your email for you, okay. and I couldn't add it in time. Okay. So it's this one. But if you can explain what you needed okay. to on there, sure. it should be fine. Okay. okay. Sorry, it's one of them. Thanks. Uh, we have a lot of like, UPS trucks, FedEx trucks parked there, so it's uh, put up a camera just to make sure there's no funny business going on uh, there. But uh, my name is Rich Gascoigne. I'm the owner of 235 North Swinton, kind of a neighbor to you guys right here. And I'm requesting a variance, um, not for the structure, but essentially for setbacks for a, a small pool uh, in the backyard. So we would like to request the variance for a three-foot setback uh, in the backyard. We have a very small backyard. 
uh, about 17 by 50. Um, we don't really have any alternative location. The sides, if you drove by, are, are very narrow. Um, uh, so there's no other place to potentially put this. Uh, this would not require any structural changes to the building itself. Uh, this would not be viewable from the street, the sidewalk in any way. Um, the three adjoining neighbors on one side, it's a storage shed. The other one is an unused uh, uh, cottage house uh, in, in the back. And then the other ones have a qu quite a large pool on the other side. Um, so it won't be viewable from the street or the sidewalk. Um, the North Naval, like I said, has a new pool. It's a much larger pool in their backyard, and it's viewable on the next slide I'll get into. So the one that says Glick Law Firm, that's what I purchased. Um, that's, that's now my property. Uh, so it's a long, thin home. It's a narrow lot. Uh, and the only location I can really put a pool would be that back, which I put in that rectangular blue there. It would be a small, serene pool for uh, you know, generating some peace in, in the area. Uh, there's no like diving board or you know, crazy stuff like that, that that's going to go on. If you, if you look um, to the south, that's a storage shed, so it wouldn't be disturbing any neighbor there. Um, to the east, that's um, uh, essentially the homeowner there is all the way on the street, so that's just kind of a, an unused, uh, I guess, you know, guest cottage. And on the other side, you can see there's, on the north side, you can see it's a brand new pool uh, and so forth. Um, there is quite a bit of noise from that pool, uh, and so I put in um, a, a new fence uh, to try to protect that. I put in some privacy screening uh, and so forth as well, um, so you can get a sense of the, what the request is. Uh, and then to look at the beautiful small backyard, this is the, the visual uh, of that. Um, so you can see the new fence that you, that's in there. Um, so you know, I don't have a lot to work with. It wouldn't be a, a loud pool. It would be a, a very serene pool. I have a great concept pool, but it didn't make it into the deck because I sent the wrong deck over. But if anyone wants to see it, I can pull it up on my computer here. Uh, and just uh, from the survey perspective, this is the, uh, what we're talking about. It's putting it in the, uh, the back there. I, I uh, also live in New Jersey. I have an 1885 general store that I, re that, I, that I redid over the last 10 years. I feel silly requesting a pool variance here after a very complex project I just did over 10 years, but that's my, that's my request. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, once again, this is um, item 8B, it's 235 um, North Swinton Avenue, um, COA 22-164. 20, um, it's a Certificate of Appropriateness and Variance. Okay, so here's the location of the property. Um, it's um, in between North Swinton Avenue and Northeast First Avenue, and it's um, south of North, Northeast Third. Um, it's located in um, the Old School Square Historic District. Um, a little bit of history about this property. Um, this site is not contributing. Um, the structure that is on site is actually, um, it was constructed in 1981. Um, it was constructed as originally as a duplex. Um, later, it was converted to a single family residence. Um, and then in 2012, it was discovered um, through uh, Palm Beach County property appraiser um, that the property owner had actually been utilize, utilizing the site as a non residential, for non residential purposes, by establishing a law office um, without site plan approval. Um, this information was conveyed to the city, and the applicant um, subsequently had some code enforcement um, issues. Um, following that up in 2013, the applicant submitted a class five site plan application. It included waivers, some in-lieu parking requests for three spaces. Um, the in-lieu parking was approved and it was granted by the city commission at the meeting of January 7th, 2014. Um, on October 2016, um, the uh, class five site plan and landscape plan was approved for the property. 
Um, it's also noted that the improvements were never completed through a building permit. So um, over time, usually within like the two years of an approval, um, the request actually expired. Um, the new owners, um, which is Rich here, um, they purchased the property in 2019, uh, and it's been returned to a residential use. No longer a duplex, it's a single family. Um, and so right now they're coming into requests for um, specifically just the swimming pool in the rear of the property um, with uh, three, in, three um, feet in the rear and both sides of the property. Okay, so we're gonna go back. Okay, so this is the front. Um, you can't see it here, but if um, you look back at the aerial, um, there is uh, front parking here that was originally approved. Okay, here's the front uh, west elevation. This is the side south. This is the rear. Another visual from the rear. Okay, and this is the existing survey. So you can see here, this is where the proposed pool is going. Um, previously mentioned, um, three foot on the north side uh, three foot in the rear, and then three foot on the side. The original setbacks for pool um, per the LDR sections are 10 foot, um, which is why they're requesting it, um, the variance. Here's another image. This is a 50 foot lot, um, and I believe, um, I don't know if the dimensions are correct, uh, but it's approximately a 44 um, foot pool um, in the rear of the property. Okay, so these are the findings. Um, this is um, not a structural improvement to, a, to the building, um, but per the LDR findings, um, these are what you will need to determine whether or not uh, the, um, the request is appropriate um, to the LDRs, as well as um, all the historic preservation elements and the um, visual compatibility standards and um, historic preservation regulations. Um, here are the variance findings um, per LDR section 247A6. These are the findings um, that the applicant has to justify. Um, you did receive their justification statement with the packet, um, but these findings determine whether or not the variance is appropriate um, for the request. And that completes my presentation. Oh, also, sorry. Um, we did also receive, um, you should have received in your email a few hours ago, we did um, get a comment from the applicant to the north of the property. It's at 255 um, North Swinton um, that had um, concerns regarding the variance. Um, if you don't, if you do not see your email, you have, okay, so you should have copies in front of you. Um, a copy was also emailed to the applicant. Do you have it? Uh, I did. I'd love to comment on it if nobody else wants to comment. We'll go to public comment, and then if you want to do um, rebuttal or cross-examination, you're, you're welcome to. Thank you. Did you need to look it over again? Or? Uh, no, I, I definitely digested it. Thank you okay. for the opportunity. That completes my presentation. Thank you. OK, are there any public comments? Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris Finley. I'm the attorney for the property owner um, at 246 Northeast First Avenue. Um, it's Mike and Olga Lobert. They live, uh, their property is um, immediately to the east and behind the subject property. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, Ms. Lobert is undergoing chemotherapy for cancer and she had a treatment today. She planned to be here. She was not feeling well, so I'm here for better or for worse. Um, uh, the, the, the Loberts want to oppose the, um, the uh, variance in the COA. Um, you know, in the LDRs, you know, the, the setback is 10 feet. We understand that. Um, but this is even, you know, the LDRs go on to say um, under 4.615G that that 10 foot variant, that 10 foot setback can be reduced if the property is adjacent to like a 50 foot open space or a zero lot line property, um, neither of those exist in this instance. And even under those circumstances, the, the maximum variance is, is um, maximum setback is five feet. 
So this goes way beyond what's contemplated under the LDRs. Um, the carriage house, you know, if you look at the, the south, um, I don't know how to get to the photos. Um, Do you need an aerial? Yeah, right there, that one. This one? Yeah. Okay. So if you look, this is the south side elevation. You can see that my client's carriage house in the back, that, that carriage house is used um, by guests and um, you know, family members of the um, property owner. So their concern is you know, with a swimming pool back there being, I, I guess I haven't measured it. Again, I'm, I'm very late in this game, but it looks to me like this, prop, this pool can be within eight or 10 feet of that building. Um, and it's, um, you know, their concern again is, is going to be noise. I don't know. I don't know if the guests going to, you know, op, you know, occupy this property as a primary residence or if it's an Airbnb or anything like that. But um, certainly, you know, they have concerns about, you know, noise and, and a disruption in their property based on the close proximity to the pool. And um, that's it. So we, we urge you to deny the uh, variance in the COI. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Seeing none, is there any rebuttal or cross-examination from staff? Staff has no comment or rebuttal. Is there yes, I, from the applicant? Um, so to be clear, the pool that's just to our north is substantially larger. It is very loud and there's been no effort to put any screening whatsoever there. Uh, the, the fence was dilapidated and actually two feet onto my property. I asked the property owner, you know, could we go in, put a new fence in, put some screening in. They were willing to let me do it at my own cost, which I did. So, uh, I, I, so first of all, as it relates to the letter, I think that's very disingenuous that some were to say they're focused on the quietness of the community and so forth. There was no effort made financially or just from a resource standpoint to put any effort in to try to make that quiet. I do get woken up when I have guests there that are, you know, and I, the, the extra two feet setback, if it goes to a five foot setback, I hear them when they enter the pool on the north side. So there's, there's just an extra two feet would mean nothing uh, from that standpoint. I hear them when they turn their stereo on and, and those sorts of things. Um, so I think I've made every effort to put in place proper screening, a new, uh, a new fence for this. Um, in the property that you're talking about here, that property owner was eight feet on my side of the property. Um, so I had to work with her to move her fence back. Again, nobody, she wouldn't, wouldn't be willing to help me with the fence, so I, my own cost and effort, put the new fence in, put in screening and so forth, and tried to work with her uh, on that. Um, she does not live in that property. I've never seen anyone in the, the back of that property. It's, we're talking about all the way at the front of that property as well. Um, it, as you can see, that's a, it's a very small lot. You can't put in a, a pool that somebody's going to be swimming laps in or you know, playing games or things like this. This is going to be a much more serene sort of, uh, sort of pool. Um, so I'd request you consider those factual data points on both sides of so people who have made complaints that we're not willing to, that we're encroaching on my property eight feet and two feet, actually even more than two feet, and not willing to make any adjustments to what they were putting in, their pool and, and other, uh, other things. Thank you. Any questions on that or? Um, I think you guys are moving into board discussion. So if they have any questions, they'll call you up and, and address you. Thank you. All right, um, moving into board discussion. Um, I have, I have a question. Uh, oh, is this a, sep this a separate letter from the speaker? Yes. So we have two complaints. Two, two, two people two that... People who are... Two neighbors that don't want it to happen. <laughs> okay. I have a question for staff. Mm -hmm. Do you know if the pool um, that was, he was speaking of to the north has closer to the um, property line did it get a variance um, for what I can recall um, it looks like that was a more recent pool um, and there are, for 255 I don't believe we have a variance on that so if it would have went through permit we would have approved it with the the 10-foot setbacks okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Um, can, do you know how far uh, the the house in front of it with the carriage house is that contributing? That is a contributor. Yes, and that's part know, of uh, Banker's Row. Okay. Do you know how far the pool will be from the main house? Is the carriages contributing as well as the main Correct. house? Yes. Okay, but how far is the, would the pool be from the main house where someone lives all the time? I understand the cottage is for guests. But. Those are questions for the applicant. That question. I don't you think. may know. Okay. Um, I can... Um, if you'd like, I can ask the applicant to step up. Maybe he has the answer specifically for the dimensions for that. He okay. may he may know a little bit better than I would. Okay. I, I just was I, I, if, if someone is living in the main house all yes. the time, they would be more concerned about noise than an occasional guest. Correct. So I just wondered the. Yes. Would um, if, if if we knew the distance. <laughs> Go back to the prior presentation. If you could survey. just come up to if you could just come up to the podium, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Sorry, that's how they capture you on video. We, we might be able to see it with the survey and just give you an approximate. Uh, okay. Their survey is uh, will be coming up in a minute. Let's, nope. Let's so the pool that. would be three foot from the fence, and the fence is about 15 feet to the um, uh, to the uh, uh, guest house. Oh, it doesn't actually show that. No. Um, okay, so the get, oh. guest house does... Uh, have the proper setback? I mean, it's not right at the property line. It's 10 feet away, um, it's at least. I don't want to say for sure. It, it was okay. uh, there was a, it was an alley behind the two properties, and then that was converted and that was supposed oh. to be split. It was abandoned. Yes. The the person you're talking about took all of it. I had the survey done. and recognized it was all taken, so I took eight feet of a 16 foot alley. So I've got eight feet, and then she's got another like eight feet to her awesome. We do see here it shows the abandonment on your side, so I do see the extra eight feet. Um, it's hard to say for sure without seeing a survey. Okay. Um, and because the structure was in 1929, I have um, done a site visit on that property, but um, I I know it's 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 not that close up to the property line, but I can't say specifically for sure. It's, it's oh. quite far. I've visited the house. It's there's no way she's going to hear anything that, that goes on there. Uh, okay, and an, another question for you is, um, are you going to be living in this house, or is it going to be rentals? Uh, he, uh, the other gentleman referred to it as an Airbnb. No, I, I live in the home. I also live in New Jersey, as I mentioned before, so I float in between the two. Okay, so you're homesteading in this house, and you're... Uh, okay. I, I, I don't think I've set it up that way, but yeah. Okay. Um, that's all. Um, is a representative from the house with the cottage here? I think that's the gentleman here. Okay. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little confusing because we, we got a, a letter and a speaker. Um, I just wondered if you were already, ha your client was having issues with the other larger pool. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know, but I think I think that the applicant made the case for my client, which is he's bothered by the pool to his north, and it's further away. So you know, my, my client's concern is justified um, with a pool that's you know essentially 11 feet from their cottage house. And I would also point out that you know, the cottage house is often used by family members who may stay for a long period of time. So it's not like it's not used at all. Um, there may be somebody there, you know, on, on a long-term basis. Do you think that's true? Yes. Sir, uh, she has addressed the question to him, so I just want him to ask, answer the question. But if, if that's complete, thank you very much. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to make a rebuttal to that if possible. At this point, we're actually in board discussion, but if the board has a question for you, they will, they will address you. Sure. I have a question. I have a question. Um, I don't see an exact size on the pool. I don't see a setback from the back of the house. What is that dimension? So I was looking. Okay. I can pull it up. Don't worry. Um, you know it's 44 feet in length. So this, the setbacks for all three sides, um, so it would be north, east, and south, um, all three, uh, three feet. So how wide does that make the pool? I think the pool would then be, so because we don't have a variance, I haven't got an official bid 
you know, on the on the design and so forth. But I believe it would be approximately um, uh, thirteen to fourteen feet wide. Thank you. For those of you familiar with pools, that's a very narrow, small pool. Again, the gentleman mentioned that I can hear the other pool. It's a very large pool. It's got a spa. Um, you know, people do laps there and so forth. This is not a pool that you're able to do laps in. You can't jump in. There's no, no diving board, etc. This is kind of difficult for me because, you know, I like to show people that um, historic districts are not so restrictive and that we can allow setback changes, but I've never actually had two neighbors complain about the, the proposed setbacks. Um, this is not a historic issue. The, and this, it, it's also, this house is not contributing, and the other house is historic. So it, you know, I need help from my board members. <laughs> I would say that it, it's, for me, it's not a historic issue. It's just purely a setback issue the three feet seems like nothing setback that that to me is I mean if you consider it say they did three feet on each side that's less than a zero lot line a zero lot line is still 10 feet so it, to me just as reading the LDRs as a homeowner uh, when you purchase a piece of property you know what you're buying you know that if a pool is a must be for you then you should be looking at something where you can fit a pool um, I think that I would have an issue with it if I were a neighbor so this, this this board the historic preservation board we've been very very reluctant to grant waivers or variances because we know that they exist for a reason. We have granted variances in cases where it was necessary to have the variance for, for the, the structure to maintain its historical integrity. The problem is that's not the case here. This is purely uh, you know, trying to squeeze a, a pool in a yard that's not big enough for it. So. Uh, from a historic preservation board uh, perspective, I cannot be a justification for us to support the variance. I agree. I agree too. I'm still a little unclear about <laughs> the alley abandonment and the eight feet on either side. If either the applicant uh, or staff could explain it appears from this drawing that eight of the 16 feet uh, ha now belongs to the property of the applicant and uh, he is extending uh, within maybe five feet of his eight feet uh, which was formerly alley and I guess the person, the owner to the east was in that area and took up the whole abandoned alley but has now been pushed back is that is that correct and so there is some amount of setback between the carriage house and the middle of the abandoned alley is uh, do we know what that what that is is that The alley, if I remember correctly, was 16 feet, so right. it was eight feet. Uh, then it's eight feet plus whatever to get. To Does the carriage house extend into no. that setback? No, it doesn't. Also helpful. So there's at least eight feet on that side plus some more yeah. to get to the carriage house. Um, we just looked up there. Um, the um, the property to the east that we're looking at, um, they did recently come in with the COA um, for some improvements. So we do have a updated site plan. Um, the we did look, and the rear setback is actually about nine foot for the um, the carriage house. So it's almost within the ten foot required setbacks. But historically, not just right. not just yes. Under. Okay. Yes, it's salon conforming. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. 
If this was a contributing house, and as Ben said, it was a compromise needed to save the structure, um, I would feel more inclined to support it, but um, that's not what we're looking at. I have a question for the applicant. Um, so where it's showing the wall, um, is that the fence that you put up recently? You said that you, the your neighbor to the I understand correctly, the neighbor to the north and the neighbor to the east replace those dilapidated fences on your own dime? Um, uh, that little dot, dot, dot in between the pool, is that currently a fence? Um, that was um, the, um, would have been the west end of the alley. The, the old so the, the new fence is on the east. It's all, all over the east. It's all over the so all over the east, all over the south, and all over the north. That fence the fence was, is the red line? I'm just trying the to... The fence is the red line, correct. Okay. The fence is the red line. The dot was um, uh, the... Um, I believe that's representing the where the alley was Got supposed it. to have been. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. And again, the, the neighbor on the south, that is a shed or... Uh, uh, I, I've not seen anyone in the, 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 the guest house, which again is like... It, I think it's more than 10 feet, but maybe it's nine feet. Um, and uh, like I've, uh, this, I've never even met the North neighbor that the house was just purchased by the person who did a complaint. Um, but the history behind that was again, I asked the neighbor with the, who's putting the pool up, look, the fence is pulling, is there gonna be safety issues, privacy issues, et cetera, and, and put that up. So I was, I was, I had to put this up while he put his pool up essentially. How far is the first edge of the pool from your from the back of your home? Um, so we don't have it designed yet because we don't have the variances approved. But mm -hmm. we were looking for um, three feet there. Okay. Three feet all the so way around. Have you measured how wide your pool could be if you stayed within the current setback? Uh, well, it would have to be 10 feet, and then I think it's 10 feet, so I think it would be zero. <laughs> buildings. Well, no. I think the building's 10 feet from the property line now. Oh. But he gained eight feet. How could he be? He can't. Than no. There's there would be about seven feet by 30 feet. It's eight plus something because the, right, the, the, the he abandoned gained alley was, oh, was eight feet. Taken half the alley. But if I go right. to 10 feet, and then it's 10 feet from the house. You don't have to be 10 feet from your house. Your pool doesn't have to have a setback from your house. It doesn't have any setback at all from the house then? I, I mean, that would be a question for the pool designer, but I, I don't think your pool has to be a certain distance away from your home. I, I thought, and it certainly doesn't need to have 10 feet. Right. You know, I, I, the reason that I ask you that is because I have seen, and this is outside of, you know, historic discussion and, and really what we're talking about here, but these more modern homes that have what you're describing of like a serene pool somewhere where you can't do laps, you can't do whatever, but it is part of your outdoor living space that truly are six, seven, eight feet wide that are not deep enough to dive into, but are 30 feet long. And it, it becomes part of your landscape and part of your space. So I'm these are we have very rough dimensions to go off of here but it, i'm hesitant to say that you could not fit what you're describing within your actual setbacks within the the current setbacks um so you're saying that from the fence the, the fence on the east side going out 10 feet that would give me i, I think around eight feet to the home you probably want at least a few feet up from what the pool person from her correctly said. So we'd be looking at, at five feet for the, the width of the pool. I think that would be probably pushing the envelope as it relates to, I, I think I know what you're talking about. I, had a, I have a concept of, I think, the exact type of pool you're talking about. And it, it needed a few more feet to be able to, to make that work. So I mean, we're, if, if like the answer is like we have to play with feet here and there to create a serene, peaceful, 
you know, that, that, that area gets just heat, you know, uh, there. If we can just put something out there, it's not going to create a lot of noise, adds beauty to the area, and we can just play with some feet there, because otherwise I think I'm working with like four or five feet as the width. I don't think that's correct. Yeah, I did. You, you've I'd... got 14 feet now. And so you're asking... I think I have more than 14 from the fence to the house is no, more no, than 14. The, the, exist, the pool that I, you have drawn I think, drawing is 14. I think we want to avoid the going back and forth. If you have a question for the applicant or a question for staff, go ahead. But I don't think um, I'd like to go back to board discussion if that's... Yeah, say something. I, did sure. you have another question for him or no, I wanted to I hear just, your thoughts? I was thinking along the lines that you were in that, um, you know, it, uh, I... I'm having a hard time justifying a variance um, because in the historic district we have done pools in front yards we've done you know modifications to and variances for um, multiple things but um, don't believe that we've allowed that with the objection of the side-by-side uh, -side neighbors so I, I do I do want you guys to focus in on you know the requirements of the variants which are, are laid out on page seven for you a through e um, just because you can't make a decision based on who likes it or who doesn't like it um, so if you just focus in on those those particular items and why you do or do not think it fits those items and if I could agree with you there but it's to me not even I mean, obviously, we want to hear from everyone and hear from the public. But to me, that's not even like the current owners aren't even my biggest concern. I don't see any reason that this is necessary. And in addition, any of the the, the other property owners could sell at any point in time, whether they agree with it or not. I can't find any good reason to substantiate the the request so maybe somebody else sees something within well I, I think it's at least arguable that e kind of comes into play here um, which is more of the adaptive reuse and um, I, I I see you shaking your head but I, and it's not a reuse in the sense of, of going from commercial to residential or vice versa. But if you see up and down the street, historic street with people putting swimming pools behind the historic houses to make them more fitting in with the living out of doors or with the, the environment, that is possibly an argument that would, that would fit into what we're doing. Yes, but that's for adaptive reuse, and, and this isn't a contributing building. Um, was there discussion with staff of other options, like a pool in the front, and is that a possibility? So I'm glad that you are asking this question because this is what I wanted to address. Um, I think that if the board is leaning in one direction, which would maybe be a denial, that you should discuss with the applicant if he is willing to look at some other options and then come back to the board because it's difficult. You can't really design. We haven't notified a variance if you're going to approve less of a variance. Like it needs to follow a particular set of rules. And that way, it, what happens with a denial with an applicant, they either go away or they appeal but they lose their entire application fee and their application submittal. So if you give him a chance to maybe address that and see if he's willing to make a modification that could help the homeowner. Would yep. you like to ask him that? I'm happy to help him accomplish his goals, and um, but I don't think the board is, I can, I can only speak for myself, but it, it seems that this solution is, is not setting well. Yeah. I, I, I think she's mentioning that if you guys are willing to, you know, continue with direction, if you want to see if the applicant's open to that, um, if you guys are, you know, heading toward um, 
if you guys would like to do that, you can address that with him to see if, you know, there might be other options or if there's another way that he could bring it back in or work with staff or yeah. et cetera. I would be glad to ask the applicant if he would be willing. We would be willing. Okay. I like that. Um, I would be a little would... concerned that Claudia's idea not be a, a wild goose chase on the part of the applicant in the following sense that there's any, I don't know of any other pools on Swinton in the front yard or certainly in that area. Uh, so if he were to explore that, would we be able to consider it when he comes back? I think that that's something that there was one on, on Nassau Street in the Beach Historic District. Uh, there well, are, yeah, there but, are, are yeah, in historic in districts. District. No, I understand that, but I'm thinking of just Swinton. This, okay. So I would suggest um, continuing, if you, that's the direction you're going in, to date certain. So if he doesn't modify the request and he prefers the denial for whatever reason, he doesn't have to re-notice the variance. Okay. And if he does modify the request, and we have to re-notice the variance, then we'll approach that prior to coming back to the board. But what would I, be a good date certain? The first meeting of July? Is it the... Does that work with the applicant? Does yes. that work for you? The first uh, Wednesday? Would you know what day that meeting is? Wednesday. I don't have my phone on me. July 6th. July 6th, July 6th yeah. Um, I believe so, yeah. So I'll say, I'll say yeah. And if for any reason he were to find that he wasn't available we could postpone again at that meeting to August if something it would came be up. July 6th. Yeah. Thank you. But what, what I was trying to say, if I may, I think the applicant also proposed another way that he would be willing to consider this, which is resizing the pool to, to some degree so that we aren't giving him direction on which way to head, but let him think about what's the best uh, from his I would, standpoint. I, w I would think that the direction would be come back to us with a solution that allows you to put the pool without requiring the variance. I agree, and specific um, measurements, I think, would be appreciated. So you... Because right now it's like, well, well it right might be a few feet that. away from the house, and it might be, uh, might be 14 yeah. feet. You know, I think part of the reason you have a survey and you have drawings done is that we can see actual mentions. Could we say preferably without a variance as opposed to absolutely without a variance? I think right now we're, we're just considering moving to continue with direction, but we're not stipulating yeah. exacts. We're just if moving. You, if you want to continue with direction, I mean, you should give some direction. I think you guys have given some direction. Um, I think what Jim's maybe saying is like reducing, if, if they were, he were to be reducing the setback or or finding a way to do it without the variance or something to that nature to, is that is that correct? Okay. So then the question is, are we willing to put a number on that or are we willing to discuss any kind of reduction in the setback? I, I don't think we're suggesting a number. No. Uh, My question was just the chairman's direction of not considering a variance. My feeling is um, that a pool in a non-contributing building in a historic district should not be allowed to have a variance. It's my own yeah. opinion. And I think that's what the chair was indicating. Versus coming back and saying, oh, well, I only I, want five I, feet now. I don't think we should be that restrictive. I think we should just ask him to, to come back. We've given him direction. We should just ask him to come back at a date certain and see what he comes come back, back with. with a better plan. Uh, can staff make a quick comment, if I can? Yeah, can. Um, <laughs> although this is a contributing structure because it was just recently built, um, this is a 1980 structure, and with you know most structures within the historic districts, new new ones within their 50 years could considered to be um, contributing within the 50 years. So you know maybe the next 30 years when they do a resurvey, this could be a contributing structure. Um, so even though it's not a contributing one at this moment, 
it, it could be helpful to still kind of consider the property as, you know, maybe one day it could also fit into that category. And I do want to just make one comment and then I think I agree with you guys, you've given direction and we can go ahead and move into the motion. But as far as the variance, I, I just want you guys again to be guided by the, the five elements. And, you know, if something did come to you that met those, then, you know, be available to make that decision at any point. So that was my only comment. And whoever wants to go ahead and Do you, make Does it. it need to be stated clearly? Or? Well, we need a motion. <laughs> do we need a motion? Yes, we need a motion to. I, I make a motion to continue that, to ask the applicant to continue with direction for date certain of July 6th. I'll second. Elise Lemstrom. Kristen Finn? Yes. Robert Ostinoff? Absent. Elise Lindstrom? Yes. Rhonda Saxon? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Claudia Willis? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? Yes. The next item is um, 8C, it's 231 Venetian Drive, um, entering COA 2021-086 into the record. It's a certificate of appropriateness and a variance. Okay, do we have any ex parte communication on this item? None. No. No. No? I did a drive by when it was on a previous agenda. I drove by. Okay, the, um, the applicant's agents are here to present. Good evening. I'm John Reed with uh, JSR Design Group, The Architects. And uh, I, I think when you previously drove by, uh, the property was looking to do a two-story addition in the rear of the house in the same location um, that uh, since then the property has been purchased and the current owners did not want to do something that's so aggressive and so they're looking at now just doing a garage a one-story garage where before uh, this area was looking to be uh, one story or the first floor carport and then with a an apartment that was connected to the main house in the rear um, the reason this area of the property was chosen was it was uh, least intrusive in terms of changing the historic uh, from the street perspectives where on NASA Street as well as Venetian uh, it is considered uh, multifamily uh, but based on the um, uh, what was has been called the trick-or-treat test uh, it is more seen as part of the single family residence of Nassau Street is what uh, the intent is to be preserved being the uh, trick-or-treat test being the front door if you were to go trick-or-treating at this house this would be the front so um, so now that it's one story the uh, we are conforming with the existing or maybe, um, this is from the Nassau view. Uh, the car or the garage addition would be behind here. So this rendering, which before had a two story back in this area. Um, now this rendering, which is, would be the actual view today, would not, the intent of that is not changing at all from, uh, from Nassau Street. Um, and we are not asking for a variance in terms of uh, the setbacks for this. Uh, they would be using the existing driveway and then pull into the driveway. It's currently uh, pavers now, which has been used for the cars to pull into. So they're just uh, securing it as a garage. Um, this is the history of originally this was a and still is a duplex. 
the red was the original structure, I believe, in 1949, or um, was the original house. It was kind of a mirror of each other. And then uh, a few years later, the blue was added, a flat roof structure. And then uh, a few years after that, the green was added, which was also a flat roof structure, which matched the blue. Um, this is over the years, the additions. Uh, the also with the previous, um, the original submittal, uh, we were, uh, which I guess is irrelevant now, they are looking at uh, matching this roof and doing a covered porch into the front, uh, towards the front of the house, which is considered uh, Venici or Venetian. And then, um, but which was, wouldn't be permitted, but based on the trick-or-treat test, we are going for a variance, but that is no longer part of this submittal. So this is the garage, which is proposed in the rear of the property. I would say the northeast corner of the property. This is the roof plan, which is uh, matching the existing flat roof structures of the two considered historic additions. Um, this is the evolution of the original structure from the south. This was the one of the first editions a few years later. This was the second edition, and then this is what we're proposing, which now uh, is the same as what's existing from the south. Um, this line was originally part of a sight line for the second story, which no longer matters. Um, here's the changes from the front of the house over the years. And as you can see, this is the current state of the house. And this is what that same front from Venetian would remain the same. Um, now this is the portion that does change. This was initially the house. There was the addition with the flat roof structure with a little bit larger. And so this is proposed from the south side view, the addition of the garage. And this was a, a section basically uh, initially first edition second edition and this would be the garage from the basically invisible but um, from a section through the house um, these are you know this is the single family residence along Nassau Street and here's the multifamily along Venetian Street which a lot most of these are all two stories but we're not going for the two-story anymore. Um, these are the existing views, which from the street won't change. And uh, this is from the south, which uh, the garage would be tucked behind. Do you wanna? Yeah. And Carol will talk about the pool. Good evening. I'm Carol Perez with AGT Land, and uh, we are requesting a pool variance. Ms. Perez, have you have oh, you been sworn in? I have been sworn in. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see, that is the subject property, and it is on the northwest corner of this historic district. And uh, directly across the street is a condominium and, and par a parking lot. And then also across the street, you'll see the multifamily um, homes over in this, or these are the townhomes in this area. This is the parking lot. And uh, there's Venetian, which is considered the front yard of the property. And then it's Nassau, which is considered a uh, street side yard. And then directly across the street here, there is a home that also has a pool in this, this corner. Um, which basically we're kind of mimicking that. And this is a rendering of the, of the proposed pool plan. Uh, currently there is a 25 foot setback on the front of the property. So that is from Venetian. And then there's also a 25 foot setback from Nassau Street. So it, 
um, what we've done here is is put the pool in basically the only open space that um, is available. It's a very small home. Uh, the Beckworths just purchased it last month. They are super excited about being on this street. Um, and we have kept, um, so our setbacks that we have now uh, are between, uh, I think 16, or no, 13 feet down to 10 feet around the property line. And that changes because there's an, there's an arc there at the property line. So along Venetian, the setback starts out at 13 feet 9 inches. And then as the property line curves around the corner at that pinch point where the pool's corner is, we go down to a 10 foot setback. And then as you continue on along Nassau, we go back to, um, we have 16 feet 3 inches from the property line. And I also want to point out that um, from Venetian to the pool, we have, that's like 30, we have 33 feet. Um, so it's quite, it's set back quite a, quite a few feet from, from Venetian Drive. And then from NASA, we are set back um, 32 feet um, in that area. And then we're proposing a pool patio, a uh, small pool patio with landscaping directly adjacent to the home for a little foundation planting, and then a small patio where they could put um, some, a table and chairs or a couple lounge chairs there. And there would be a fence around the pool. They are proposing a black uh, aluminum picket pool fence. And the, um, the patio material is a tumbled limestone. And as John said, this is, their, uh, this is their driveway. It is existing used brick. They are keeping you know, all that used brick. And, um, and this is basically how you, you get into the house. You would walk up the driveway, and then you come along the south side of the house on a little walkway to the front door, which, again, is on um, Nassau Street. So as far as the um, variance justifications that um, you were looking at earlier with the previous presentation, um, I kind of condensed these all down to um, a few items here. Uh, it's basically the same thing as, as what you were looking at. But as far as special conditions exist, the site is L-shaped. It is narrow. Um, I say there the width along Venetian is 60 feet, but actually the width along Venetian is only 40 feet. That's a typo. And um, you know, as you can, as you know, the the lot you know takes this little corner, which renders the space very um, difficult to work with. Uh, the applicant uh, would be deprived rights of commonly enjoyed by other people. There is a house across the street. They have their pool in the front yard, and there have been various um, variances granted along Nassau Street with several um, people being granted variances for garages in their front yard or um, buildings, um, buildings uh, being given variances for setbacks. I think there's about three different, three different um, instances of that. And if you go down the street also, there is another home that has a uh, house uh, or a pool in the front yard. And it's about halfway down the street. That address is um, 1109. So there are people that have, have been granted these, these special exceptions. And um, this special conditions does not, uh, is not resulted from the actions of the applicant. Uh, the, as you can see, the house was added on to, and um, the only open space left is, is this area. And also, in, in Nassau Street, as part of the historic district, um, it says the Nassau Street evokes a memory of prosperity, pleasure, leisure, relaxation, and style, which was the essence of the 1930s life in Delray Beach. And I believe that's directly from the historic um, board's um, uh, I don't know what the designation or, you know, that's their, their mantra. And so this pool does fit into the neighborhood. It is smaller than um, a normal size pool. It is 12 by 20. And that would be more considered a splash pool than, than a normal pool, which is 15 by 30. 
and the variance uh, is in harmony with the intent of existing regulations and not detrimental to public welfare. Uh, the pool is located along two streets. It would not be a problem for anybody. It is below ground. No one is, it won't interfere with the views of the historic structure. It is also, um, it will also modernize the residence and provide an adaptive reuse of the site and is compatible with the neighboring properties and the scale of the residence as it is a smaller pool and um, will not look out of place. And that's the hardscape plan. I'll go back to that rendering. I do have um, I do have another little rendering you could pass around if, you, if someone doesn't mind. And that shows the landscape. That's the rendering shows the landscape more along the lines of what we were planning with a hedge um, along, but uh, well between the two duplexes. And that concludes my, oh, I, I will say another thing. Um, I did include, um, there was a landscape plan and then a tree removal plan. The Beckworths um, have already uh, submitted a permit to remove the invasive Schefflera trees that are on property. There was quite a few of them. And if you did drive by, um, Claudio, you, you probably, I don't know if you saw the trees gone or if they were all bushy and um, kind of in the way of the view of the house anyway, but uh, the Schefflera's have been taken out. The ficus tree remains and the Beckworths, it, it's there on the corner of the property. The Beckworths would like to work with it. They had an arborist clean it up and trim it up and they're trying to save it and make it look better and um, see if they can, see if they can do that. There's also a royal palm on the in the corner that is remaining and then the rest of the landscape would be new and um, you know conducive to the area coastal living and that's that's it thank you This is a certificate of appropriateness and various uh, variance application. Um, this is for 231 Venetian Drive. Um, the request is for um, a 544 uh, square foot garage addition, uh, as well as a swimming pool to the front, which a variance um, is requested for the setbacks. Uh, this uh, application was a part of the um, last month's um, COA um, agenda. Um, it was on the it was a COA on the agenda, um, as the as previously noted in the staff report, um, the owners were um, selling and the home was under contract. So um, instead of going on with the original approval, which you originally saw that had the the two story addition and some modifications to um, the front of the structure, um, the they decided to continue um, to a date certain, and uh, the new owners came in and um, modified uh, the the uh, request um, to what they wanted for the new, um, the historic structure. Um, so the property was um, purchased by John and Eleanor Beckworth. Um, their new request is for the, um, the one story two car garage, which is in the, um, the northeast part of the rear side of the property, as well as the constru construction of the swimming pool in the front west side of the property. So here's um, an aerial of the map of the location. It's at the very end of the Nassau Park Historic District. And it is also, um, if you can, let me go here. This is part of a duplex. This is 229 uh, Venetian Drive. Okay, so here's the front west elevation. And here, if you look towards the north, this is the area where 229 is. Here's the side South Street. Um, the area in the rear over here is where the uh, proposed rear addition is. 
This is another uh, view of the side um, south street from the southeast elevation. This is from the south side elevation. So here this is closer to um, right here you can see the front of the uh, the property. They recently just removed, um, I think as um, Carol mentioned, they did some um, landscape removal. So a lot of their um, original um, foliage is uh, been removed so you can kind of see the structure a little bit better. Originally when you would drive through here it was kind of hard to see um, the side and the front elevations uh, from the street. Okay this is the um, south side elevation this is um, again towards the front um, which is technically um, considered um, the front door area of the house. More side street elevations and this is the rear um, so this area here is where the proposed garage is um, uh, proposed. Um, the window and door that we see here is going to be removed. Um, this is also part of the request. Um, and then the garage will be in place and then there will be a, an, another opening added here um, that goes into the garage door. And this is another image um, of you looking outside from um, inside of the structure. So here we can see the survey. Um, this little area here just shows um, the other part of the duplex, um, but this area here is part of the COA proposal. Okay, um, this is where the proposed pool is going in the front elevation, um, and then the rear addition here with the garage. So the proposed variance for this, um, it, it's the request um, includes um, four foot on the north side, and then there's kind of a range here um, 10 foot 9 inches um, going more towards north and then as um, you kind of get towards this curve here um, it goes to oh, sorry th this area is um, 10 foot 9 this area here goes to 13 um, 8 okay here's some more elevations here you can see where the proposed pool is going to be um, the car addition is in the rear here so it's not visible from the public right away Here's another image of the pool. There is a proposed um, fencing that will be constructed along the front um, as per the, um, the regulations in our LDRs for the pool. Um, let's see. I just wanted to mention the height. It's okay, so they're proposing a four foot black aluminum fence um, that's proposed to this area right here. So the whole front and um, south side um, will be enclosing the pool. Okay, so these are the progression of changes that we're um, seeing from um, the original 1949 um, structure onto um, the current existing one. So here we can see the kind of changes of elevations on the south side. Here is the north. Okay, this is the existing um, front west elevation. And then you can see here the proposal, um, which originally had changes um, that were made to the front porch. There's gonna be a new modification to the front porch. Um, it's now been removed, so there's no, um, there's no modifications or any proposals um, to the front elevation. This is the existing south side. Here we can see that the existing and the proposed are the same. Um, there's also no changes to um, this side as well. Uh, the south and the west side are the most front-facing uh, public right-of-way, so um, the proposal, the newest proposal, um, definitely removes um, some concerns from um, the visual compatibility standards, um, as well as the Secretary of the Interior. Um, I'm gonna go back. Um, this area that was proposing the front porch, um, there was a waiver for secondary and subordinate. Um, they were going to waive for the, um, there was a waiver request for the um, secondary and subordinate standard from visual compatibility, but as there is no longer um, any proposals for this area, the request for the variance to the front is no longer um, required. Um, okay, so this is the um, existing uh, rear elevation up here. 
Um, here you can see uh, the other part of the duplex as well as the proposed and in the rear of the property um, you can see the garage addition. Okay, um, this is another image of the north side. So here, um, once again, you can see um, the duplex part of the structure of 229 uh, Venetian. Um, the only changes as mentioned because of the proposed garage, there's modifications to the windows and doors. Um, there's no concern to that because of the um, addition. And you can see this is in the rear of the property, so it doesn't peek out and it's not visible from the public right away. Um, it is going to have a sloped roof um, and there's there's no concern with regard to heights or the secondary um, my mind just blanked out um, the secondary uh, standard for uh, visual compatibility there was also a variance required um, for this area too there was originally a carport um, with a two-car garage that was proposed to the rear here um, as uh, the proposal has changed, very similar to the front, um, the waiver um, for the secondary and subordinate standard is no longer proposed for this area as well. So um, any waivers that were originally requested that you saw in the previous staff report are no longer a part of the request. Okay, here's an image of the landscape plan. I think Carol um, talked briefly about this. Here's more elevations. This is the rendering. And then this is the proposed material list. Um, this is the four foot aluminum fence, um, as well as the limestone uh, pavers that will be going around the pool. The original proposal um, also uh, proposed the change of the roof. Um, currently, it is a um, it's barrel tile roof. Um, I think they originally proposed to replace it with, um, I think a wood shake shingle. That is no longer a part of the proposal. Um, however, if you notice in the staff report, I just wanna note this for the record. Um, although um, the roof is not changing, um, technically the barrel tile roof is not appropriate for this type of architectural style, um, but as they're not changing it, there's no concerns. Um, but as we mentioned in the staff report, um, this is a minimal masonry structure. Um, so if they were to um, change it in the future, the original was created with an asphalt shingle roof. Um, so more than likely changing it to something more compatible, visual compatible um, with something um, for an asphalt shingle would be appropriate. So I um, just wanted to note that um, just for future reference for the structure. These are the findings um, for LDR section. Um, you need to determine whether or not um, the request is appropriate. Also, um, very similar to um, the previous um, CRA request, these are the variance findings. Um, the, this, um, the applicants did have a justification statement um, as long as well as with visual compatibility, Secretary of the Interior Standards, um, they did include a variance um, justification statements um, talking about the findings and whether or not their request was appropriate. So based on um, these, very similar to the last request, um, you should look to these to decide whether or not the request is appropriate. Um, and the variance specifically um, just looks at the, the pool and the front setback. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, I don't suppose we have any public comment. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any rebuttal or cross-examination from staff? Staff has no rebuttal. Any rebuttal or cross-examination from the applicant? <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. We can move into board discussion. Okay, I'll, I'll go up. Um, well, welcome to new neighbors and kudos to the new neighbors, uh, to the new owners as well as the architect for taking the plan forward. Uh, the previous plan did not honor Nassau Street uh, in, in my mind with respect to the Secretary of Interior Standards, but this, um, this does. And 
I, it's the historic street of Nassau Street. That view is what um, we are really concerned about. Venetian Drive, less so, although it is street view. Um, I don't find the problem with the pool at all, uh, any problem. And I also am very appreciative of the one-story garage done in the rear. That was very brief. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to start with kudos, too. I'd like to uh, compliment uh, Ms. Perez for talking about landscape. That's uh, something that's a hot topic for us up here uh, from a historical perspective. So thank you for offering and, and putting it forth without us asking about it, which we can't really ask. Um, the, I've got a, a number of questions. Um, the travertine that was init uh, proposed initially, is that no longer part of the proposal? Or is it all used brick that was, I think that was in the drive. Would staff like, or would app, the applicant like to respond? I know that they had limestone, but I'm not sure. If, yeah, it's the same. I saw it on the drawings, it, it, they have the, the, they have the, the limestone. tumbled limestone. I had the same question. The you uh, material should for the, the, I think the question is the material for the pool deck, right? Is well, it's both the material to, uh, for the pool deck and, and also the drive. I think there was some initial thought of replacing the brick paver with uh, either limestone or travertine uh the chicago brick in the driveway is remaining as is the travertine is you know that is new it's not currently a patio so that's it's not replacing it's just new for the right that i understand but i my, my question i guess to staff is how does does that qualify from a historic point of view It's a limestone. Yeah, I, I had the same question that it is the humbled limestone, which is a really, really nice pool deck material. Yeah. Is, is that is that appropriate when the driveway and the other paving material is like Chicago brick or recycled brick? And that, I guess, is a question that I'm having for, the, for our board members. So uh, we have seen, we do see commonly with a lot of other um, historic properties that, you know, if they do have, um, you know, different type of pavers for driveways and things like that, that are going to remain, um, even if they're, you know, adding a new pool, which uh, we do see a lot of um, travertine. Um, they're requesting limestone. We don't really um, have any issues with it. It's not a synthetic material. It's not plastic. Um, so it, it's, um, it's a fine material. Um, there is no real regulation saying that because they're adding one material that they are required to change out another. Um, so we don't really have any issues with them using different materials. If that answered your question. With that. Yeah, and if you've ever had Chicago brick around the pool, it's awful. Not good. No. no. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's algae ridden constantly. Stub your toe. And, it, and it's not comfortable at all. And it's very hot. It's very hot underfoot. So um, we looked at it for our house and my friends have it. We just spent one, one afternoon over there. Do you have do you have travertine? Do you have tumbled limestone? I don't have lime I don't have limestone. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the travertine like she's saying I think I think it's a better, or the limestone, I think it's a better fit around the pool. We do see it often with the mixture of materials on the on the ground. Uh, my, my next question is about the fence. Uh, we've had a lot of debates up here about design of fences and whether or, or not they fit with the, the overall design with the openings of the doors and windows and that it, it, it just, Maybe we could look at it again, but it, it did not seem to me to reflect the overall uh, design of the doors and windows and fit in with that. It's a very different feeling. To me, that, that's a typical pool fence, and I, I don't recall seeing a landscape plan because maybe landscape isn't under our, under our purview. Um, but Typically, when you see a pool fence like that and they've got a clusia hedge or something at the yeah. fence, the fence disappears 
after about three years. So I'm I'm not as concerned about the style of fence, but I understand your, your point. Yeah, and, and I don't think it's necessarily falling under landscaping. I think it, if I read it correctly, it falls under appurtenances, or at least it's listed with appurtenances. So I think it does really fall within our the fence jurisdiction. Was, the fence, yes, yeah. yes. I agree, the fence does. But I'm, I guess, I guess a question for the, um, we've got a landscape architect here, right? Yes, we do. Can I ask a question? Yes. So around the perimeter where this pool fence is, do you have a, do you have a hedge? We do have a hedge going around the, um, around the fence. And what are you proposing to use on that? We have small leaf clusia. Clusia? Yeah. So you won't, you won't see the fence at, after the clusia? I'm not sure that solves my question, but <laughs> it certainly makes it disappear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we have, we have the small leaf clusia, and then the fence goes along the north side, and it travels along um, the street corner, and then it returns back to the house um, before you get to the driveway. It doesn't go all the way down. On, on the east side? Well, it would be on the south side. Um, Yes, okay. the east side, east side on yeah. the east, east return. Right. Yes, it returns in a logical area there. Um, uh, on your drawing, the it's the here. inner fence or the uh, the inner hedge or the outer hedge. We have a um, what's on the outside. We have a small like ground cover on the outside of the fence. The fence is on the property line or within the property line, and then the clusi is on the inside. So the clusia would grow through the, the fence on the outside. Okay, yeah, I'm just looking at your artist's rendition and there are all kinds of hedges. Um, well, a black fence disappears out of you much better than a white fence if we... Well, that, that's true. So I, I, I'm for the black fence. <laughs> Is that actually... Regardless of the design and the pattern. Well, you know, when we talk about pools and safety, we... She's got hedges. Yeah. And I if, had a um, oh, that. yeah, did you? I had a fence? small comment. I don't know if it could, if it's helpful um, in the conversation because I kind of see where Jim is going. Um, but um, we do agree with Claudia. The, the color of the black does disappear. Um, white is a little more visible when it comes to aluminum. Um, so if they have a choice between white and black, that usually is uh, the black is the color that is more preferred, especially if they are doing hedging. Um, based off of i think you said materials or visual compatibility um when we when we look at visual compatibility i know you mentioned windows and then fences um we look at the streetscape whether or not you know the windows reflect what matches within the historic street streetscape um whether or not aluminum fences um aluminum as well as um, wood are our preferred materials for fencing um so if if you know if it's if it comes between them asking for PVC or something like that, um, we would prefer this. It's more of a solid metal material and it's more appropriate for the district, um, and it would fit into um, either of our his, any of our historic districts for visual compatibility because we do see these very often and um, we do also see them a lot for pools and um, the front um, in case they want to put some type of um, landscaping or. Um, some type of hedging to like hide it. And since, you know, we don't usually allow chain link or things like this, right. this is the better. Well, it's certainly aluminum would be preferable. I was thinking more of the design because we spent a lot of time, I recall, on, uh, on some railings and whether they had a diamond shape in them and uh, the uh, mass of the, of the spindles and, and things like that. And here we're, you see one shot of the fence and then say it's going to be covered up by Calusia. Uh, I'm just, I'm just wondering about that. Um, could we also see the, the site plan of the garage? Because I'm, I'm a little curious. Uh, there, that one. How do those cars turn into the garage? Th that seems to be a very short turning radius. Um, that would be a question. And, and the reason I asked the question, uh, I'm sure the owners are very good drivers, but is that really what the use of that space is going to, to be? The, the answer is, from what the clients told me, yes. They 
do realize it's tight. Originally, we had it as a carport. I said, you can get a car. I'm like, what, do you have a Mini Cooper? And they said, yes, that's what they actually have. <laughs> and they live here year round. Um, and so their big concern is they want their cars in their garage during when the hurricane comes. And I asked them if it's one coming. They said no, but eventually. But so, yes, th there's no intention of I know there was concern um you know whether it gets filled in and a roommate that's not their intention it's or uh, storage for well I, mean, I consider garage storage for cars pe and, people uh, don't put their cars in a garage anyhow Jim. well they that's my question golf and, uh, cart bike but what was their other car they had a mini cooper it's one of their cars and uh i can't remember but i was like okay not a problem okay. and uh okay. I know that was a right. concern for others I, I guess my my major question is a pool there. Uh, we we said it uh, right out that historic uh, buildings in that period didn't have pools, and obviously we're living in a different era now. And I noticed they did use the term uh, uh, creative reuse, adaptive reuse, adaptive reuse. Thank you, uh, which I tried to use in the prior one. Um, so you know I, I understand that, but do we as uh, we look at the Secretary of Interior and the uh, guide, the uh, architectural guidelines. Do we have to take that into account, or do we say no? There is one across the street, uh, and so therefore it does not really impact our historic decision. I'm sure Kelly would say that every project stands on its own merits, but. Um, you know, it's modernization that doesn't, it can be removed, like the Secretary of Interior Standards likes. It doesn't affect the historic structure. It is a contributing structure. Um, I, okay, that's my piece. <laughs> so just for the sake of discussion, I'm wondering, maybe this is a question for the designer because I spent a career second guessing designers. Why wouldn't you f reverse that and put the pool where the garage is and the garage where the pool is? That was actually ask asked of us two days ago. And because that would be more intrusive to the historic design. For the appearance, would, for the appearance of the yes, garage. Mm -hmm. it, where we'd have to put it would be block the original 1949 structure. And that's and the reason it was asked is because that's what they actually did on the other side, and that was my comment. Look at the other side; you couldn't tell what the original structure was at all. So good answer. Thank you. And oh, and then this it, uh, that other side actually had uh, more room for their garage setbacks. Ours would have to um, encroach into the setback. So we thought something below ground was less obtrusive than a garage in front of it. Thank you. I have a question for him. So typically in a historic district, we do not allow a double car garage door. We make them individual. But I don't think, I'm not trying to answer my own question, but I don't think you could pull in there. Correct. Yeah. Yep, that's, Just to and that, that was, they actually said, I was like, nope, we would have to do one car or there's, there's even with the Mini Cooper, they're going to clip a mirror. Thank you. It's not street facing. That's no, but thing. we yeah. always. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was always one of the things. Yeah. I understand totally. I just don't think it's possible. The original plan. Uh, had a hot tub in it, I assume that's no longer part of the, should I assume that's no longer part of the plan? Uh, correct. It's just a simple splash pool. Cool. Okay. And, the and the original pool did actually kind of wrap around a little further. It was much larger. Okay. He was a pool contractor. <laughs> so. Are we ready for a motion? Sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Um, real quickly, I don't, so I'm looking at the wrong one, I don't think the motion actually includes variance in it, so if you can just also say variance. Oh, no, Approve. no it does, I'm sorry, I must be looking at an older one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I move to approve cer Certificate of Appropriateness 2021-086 Waiver and Variance Request for the property located at 231 Venetian Drive, Nassau Park Historic District by finding that the request and the approval thereof is consistent with the comprehensive plan and meets the criteria set forth in the land development regulations. Kristen Finn, second. Question, you said waiver in there. I, I don't think you intended to. Well, I read the what was on the board action. Well, I'm I'm looking up here, so waiver and variance. Oh, okay. Well, that's I, which, I think which there is was which? yes. It's there's no variance. I think the version that you guys have had the variance, and we removed it specifically for. Um, oh, sorry. There's no waiver. No waiver. Thank you. <laughs> and but we specifically removed it, so the correct one was on the um, the PowerPoints. Um, but so it's just a certificate of appropriateness and variance. So the one that's showing on um, the PowerPoint is the correct version. Would you like to make uh, a new version? Uh, okay. The you get, if you just want to accept the. Um, I, I accept uh, the uh, change as directed. Second. <laughs> Kristen Finn? Yes. Robert Ostinov? Absent. Elise Lindstrom? Yes. Anna Saxon? Yes. Jim Chard? Yes. Claudia Willis? Yes. Benjamin Baffer? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any legislative items, reports, comments? No legislative items, um, reports, and comments. So our next meeting is July 2nd. And you'll note when we publish our agendas, I send the board a notice that, hey, the agenda's published. Um, the next one that we send, we're going to ask that um, you confirm your attendance in response to that email. Diane usually sends a separate email, but I thought we could probably just cut down on all the emails and I'll put it in mine. And if you can confirm prior to the meeting that you'll be in attendance, or if you won't, whatever. Uh, so that will be a new change to the email. Michelle, you said July 2nd. I think it is July Saturday. 6th. This is six. 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 I'm sorry if I said the 2nd. It's the 6th. Oh. <laughs> um, and then we submitted today um, to the Department of State a grant request. Last year, we were funded two grants in the amount of 50,000 a piece. One was to establish a GIS system for historic properties that's almost complete. The other was to do a historic resource survey of the cemetery. We were not able to secure a consultant to do that project. They were just limited on um, travel. There are now a lot of local consultants that can do that kind of project. So we withdrew that grant um, funding from last year and we submitted again this year. So that happened today. Um, we should have our scoring interview sometime in August and then they don't really tell us what fun what's funded until next spring when the legislature establishes their budget. Um, what kind of a consultant does this cemetery survey? Is it a specialist? We have had quite the education in this this past year. Um, we spoke with the experts in the state of Florida who are the team at the University of West Florida, and they're in the panhandle. Um, they are a, a possibility for us to engage um, with them, but I don't know that they are gonna work out for this cycle. It might have to be a, a consultant through them. But it's a historic preservationist. You also need a GIS person, and it, GIS is Geographic Information Systems. It's basically a, a digital mapping software that have data sets with information about every property from GPS to uh, maps and locations and all kinds of information that gets linked. 
So you have to have a person specialized in that to create the data sets. And the data sets for cemeteries will include the markers, the tombstones, um, condition of those markers, what's written on the markers, are we uh, dates of birth and death, nationality, fraternal orders. There's a very wide variety of uh, research that has to be done, but then there's also recommendations that get made in the resource survey as to what you might do in the future. Can you list the property on the local and the national register? Um, we do know that our cemetery was, upon initially being established in the late 1800s, was a segregated cemetery. So we would like to know what parts of the cemetery has been segregated so we can have proper cultural and heritage um, markers and education for students to come and learn, genealogical. So this consultant has to be very specific um, and there are not many in this area. Usually you, you go to a university and the universities south of UF, um, many of them don't have this, this expertise. So we've learned quite a bit. We're hopeful that we'll get funded again and then be able to secure the consultant in that next round. So that, that was today. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I've been asked about for updates unless you all have something that you might have asked me previously that you want an update on, but other than that, that's all I have. Are there any updates on the signs? The, the marker, like the one that's missing on Northeast 2nd? So um, we have sent, so the state of Florida maintains signs. So if the sign is still in place, they will maintain it, repaint it. If it's chipped, fix it. But when a sign is completely missing, um, you have to pay to replace the sign. So the state of Florida had their um, maintenance restoration person come and in, uh, fix up the sign that's at the FEC tr um, train station over near Bruce Room. And the Delray Beach Historic Preservation Trust is working to replace a sign. And I'm not sure which one I forget. Is it two? Two signs. Because we, we also had to go into storage to see which signs we had. I wanted to see after construction projects where they stored and never put back up. We're missing one Delida Park North sign. The old school square south sign um, is missing. The Nassau Park East sign we actually have in storage. The issue with that one was location and being close to DOT's right of way. So we're going to work through figuring out a better location for that. But the Preservation Trust committed the funding um, to work on that. I believe it's Price Patton who is leading that effort. Right. He's the president. And then we have a new brochure. It's been on the website for a few months that you can either just look at online or print. It prints best in 11 by 17, but you can print regular or legal. That has a map and a picture and location of where all of the markers are that we have in Delray Beach. Uh, these are being stolen? Is that how they disappear? No, I think the one in Delida Park was hit. Yeah, it was a traffic accident. It was right in front of Pink Cake House on the yeah. corner. Yeah. Susan Ruby's former we, house. That's why I was hoping we had it, but because um, parks or maintenance, I think, went to, to collect it and it was already gone. The one in the south end, we I'm not sure what happened, the south end of Old School Square, because um, I have photographs of it in place, so I don't know what happened to it. Do you have any uh, latest information on analysis that went forward to the city commission with regard to? No, I think you spoke with our director recently, um, Ms. Giannotis, and it's, the update is the same as I gave last time, as we have forwarded the board's memorandum to the city manager's office, and there's no further updates. So you may want to touch base yeah. with the CM or commissioners. Well, I do know the city manager forwarded it unchanged. Uh, on March 2nd to mm -hmm. all the city commissioners. Yeah, I have not heard any feedback on it beyond that. 
So if any of us know any city, city commissioners, we might mention it to them. I'm cert I certainly think you could. Yeah. Um, ask. It's always at your discretion. Yeah. Um, I did have also an announcement. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it, but the city commission did provide some new direction related to the remote policy as it applies to boards. Um, they have decided that it's not going to apply to boards. It does take a lot of time and effort of staff to try to coordinate this through IT and it requires IT to put in overtime and it now that we no longer have COVID and the reason we had the we had the emergency order out and all those reasons that allowed us to sustain that um, they've decided that it no longer applies to boards of the city so that was my only update thanks and does every anybody else need to um, reapply Did you reapply? Okay. Yes, I did. All right. I, I have been out in the public entity trying to get other people. You, you've been out campaigning? Yeah. Okay. All right, I told good. them what a great board it was, a great board it was, and how you really actually felt like you could make a difference. That's good. What was the response? I something. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know if any of them applied. <laughs> I have something I'd like to okay. share. So uh, being on the Delray Beach Preservation Trust Board, um, I'd like to share with you um, that there we have just launched a historic um, walking tour through all of our historic districts. It's available through the App Store. You can go to the website for the Delray Beach Preservation Trust and click through and um, you know, find your way to the correct app. But it has launched and it's, uh, we're excited about it. Have you done it? I haven't done the walk yet. I was on vacation last week. <laughs> it just launched like two I'm weeks ago. Already? Yeah. yeah, I think I saw a group. I think. Oh, and I think the city's going to put it on their website too, maybe, that you could, you know, find the app. Yep. <laughs> so that's a really exciting thing for Delray Beach to have this walking tour. I think it really uh, enhances our historic districts. Yeah, I think I saw a group of people on Delida Park coming down George or west on George Bush, and they looked like they were oaring or walking. They didn't look like they were house hunting. <laughs> Well, well, we're <laughs> so we yes, yes. It we're we're still in the infancy of how it's being promoted, uh, but that is one of the ways that chamber. it will. Yes, chamber. Mm -hmm. it's a, a, you can find it through the chamber too. I think we, I'll, our um, public information officer and I, I have some things I want to talk with her about, but I could ask if that can be promoted on social media, which would reach the groups of people who are using apps right um but we've we've been having a, a conversation internally um amongst staff at the city and then we've had a conversation with the preservation trust as well about creating an interactive signs that would connect to the app so that you could go to a location and read an anecdotal or historic um story at a variety of locations like the one that always comes to mind for me is the arcade tap room because i remember it as a child and saint patty's day parades and going thereafter and then the history before and um so you know we're, we're talking about it it's going to take some commitment of funding to make it happen um but we have some ideas on how it could be executed so Hopefully it would that. be really cool if you, if it is funded, if you had like certain houses where you had just a sign like in the front where nobody would go into your yard, obviously, but mm -hmm. they could, I'm, th I'm assuming you're talking about like a QR code yes. or something. And then you could, you know, could, you're standing in front of, say, my house. 
<laughs> you know, it would say, you know, this house was built. Yeah, and Kristen, these are the people that live here now. But, you know, I think that would be really cool. Because I think about, you know, the different sites, like what sites we would be thinking of. And another one is in the West Settlers District that mm -hmm. served as the, um, like the shelter, the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. um, they had the only telephone at that location or the La France Hotel and telling that historic story. Because this was an idea that developed after visiting um, Philadelphia for me several years ago and I was seeing these signs all over town and I thought why can't we do that um, so it's something we're exploring it's takes time for those kinds of efforts because you have to commit funding and all of that but right. it might also make sense to link with what uh, Jeff Dash and the chamber have done because they have sort of the equivalent of that on the on the commercial and business side so I would imagine as something that attracts tourists or tourists to be, that would be a way to find out some of what the trust has done with their app. We could certainly create a heritage tourism page within our historic website pages mm -hmm. where we could link all of these things. We have, a, we have a signage page, but I could see moving the brochure on the signage page over to something like that um, because I've been thinking too about what additional markers can we get historical markers you know the big ones that you've asked about we have a marker for atlantic avenue bridge but we don't have one for george bush and when george bush recently went down there were a lot of questions of do we have to do anything it's historic and you know people not many people realize it's on the, the local register of historic places so katharine and michelle and i have been talking about ways to enrich the history Rhonda, didn't the trust also make a resolution with regard to the golf course and the course of action that's developing there? I wasn't able to attend the last meeting because I was away, um, but they met, there was some conversation about it. I don't know what the resolution was. I, I don't know the specifics, but I, I know there was one and it was passed. And for those of you who aren't aware of this issue, uh, the golf course is very historic. The, designed and built in 1923 by what some people consider the best uh, landscape or golf landscape architect and designer this country's ever had, Donald Ross. And the city has before it uh, a study that could substantially impact portions of that golf course. And we are designated as a historic golf course by the Donald Ross Society and uh, also have been designated by the Audubon Society. So all of these things are in play, and I think there is definitely a uh, historic aspect to this that I'm not sure that there's a, a role for us, but it is a historic issue that's evolving in the city right now. Yes, it's too late to get that designated, huh? <laughs> I definitely think that would be a conversation the board would want to engage the city commission on because you would need um, consent and the commission would have to grant consent for designation of the golf course. Um, but I do know from experience and other positions I've held during my career that the trends in golfing have started to change with who the golfers are on the golf course. Um, whether you're 18 hole, nine hole executive championship, there's a lot of changes that are happening and some of those changes are facilitating the less you know you don't need as much land for the golf course so you have some surplus and some golf courses that might um, be privately owned can find a way to restore if they sell off part of their land for some other use so I'm sure that study is probably going to analyze all of that I think it would be um, interesting to to read that and see what it comes out with Anything else? Well, the only other comment, and they, they ran into the back room, but I wanted to compliment Katrina and Michelle Hewitt for carrying the meeting tonight. I noticed that they, they did that, and they did, <laughs> did it flawlessly. I hope they hear you, Michelle and Katharina. You're getting applause. <laughs> <laughs> I want a commitment, Ben. You're going to be here for the next two meetings. 
<laughs> you heard that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I will be here in the next two meetings. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? We're done. See everybody July sixth. Thank you.